It is one of the great ironies of history that Britain, with her enviable track record of democratic traditions and defiance of overjealous monarchs who sought to gather all powers to the throne, evolved into a colonial power under the circumstances it is pertinent to understand how national sentiments emerged in India and whether it shared any common ground with similar movements elsewhere across history and geography. In this chapter, we will study the following topics. The Non-Cooperation Movement and Overview The Civil Disobedience Movement and Popular Uprising 1930-34 and Peasant, Worker and Tribal Movement The circumstances that compelled Mahatma Gandhi to launch the civil disobedience movement were Formation of Swaraj Party Swaraj Party was formed outside the INC as Congress members were reluctant to differ from the programs outlined for the NCM. Due to this, C.R. Das and Motilal Nehru created a new party to contest elections and obstruct working government within the Swarajas launched their campaign against the bureaucracy in the legislature. Rise of Revolutionary Activities The virtual failure of the non-cooperation movement and the gloom that descended on the nationalist scene led to a new development of the feeling that better results could be achieved only through all India organization and better coordination. Hence, a meeting of revolutionaries from all parts of India was called at Kanpur in October 1924. Surya Sen, Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar Azad along with many others became household names and living symbols of Indian nationalism. The peasants of Bardoli had already offered Satyagraha in 1928 under the leadership of Sardar Patel. Their no-tax campaign was a partial success. The Congress decided to use the same non-violent weapon of Satyagraha against the government on a large scale. Economic Depression The effects of the worldwide economic depression played a major role in popular uprisings. Agricultural prices began to fall from 1926 and collapsed after 1930. As the demand for agricultural goods fell and exports also declined, peasants found it difficult to sell their harvest and pay their revenue. Achievements of Swaraj Party Some of the major achievements of the Swaraj Party were It awakened the political consciousness of the people of India. It fought for the improvement of the conditions of the labors and forced the government to reduce railway fare and military expenses of the British Indian government. They exposed the hollowness of the Government of India Act 1919. Sense of Collecting Belonging Indian Flag As the national movement developed, nationalist leaders became more and more aware of such icons and symbols in unifying people and inspiring in them a feeling of nationalism. During the Sodeshi movement in Bengal, a tricolor flag, red, green and yellow, was designed. It was designed by Madam Bhika Jikama. It had eight lotuses representing eight provinces of British India and a crescent moon representing Hindus and Muslims. By 1921, Gandhiji had designed the Swaraj flag. It was again a tricolor, red, green and white and had a spinning wheel in the center representing the Gandhian ideal of self-help. Carrying the flag, holding it aloft during marches became a symbol of defiance. The Simon Commission The Viceroy Lord Irwin announced in November 1927 the appointment of a statutory commission led by Sir John Simon to find ways of diffusing the Indian situation. So, when it came to India in 1928, the commission was met with the slogan, Simon, go back. In an effort to win them over, the Viceroy Lord Irwin announced in October 1929 a vague offer of dominion status for India to materialize at some unspecified date in the future. The radicals within the Congress, led by Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose, became more assertive. 
In December 1929, under the presidency of Jawaharlal Nehru, the Lahore Congress session formalized the demand of Poorn Swaraj or full independence for India. The Indian National Congress authorized the Working Committee to start the civil disobedience movement as and when it might deem fit. Mahatma Gandhi took the leadership of the Congress and decided to start the movement. In the countryside, rich peasant communities like the Patidars of Gujarat and the Jats of Uttar Pradesh were active in the movement. They were producers of commercial crops and were severely hit by the trade depression and falling prices. As their cash income disappeared, they found it impossible to pay the government's revenue demand. The government refused to reduce the revenue demand. As a result, these rich peasants become enthusiastic supporters of the civil disobedience movement. For them, it was a struggle against high revenues. They were deeply disappointed when the movement was called off in 1931 without the revenue rates being revised. The poorer peasantry who were small tenants cultivating land they had rented from landlords, due to depression and dwindling of cash incomes, it was difficult for them to pay their rent. They wanted the unpaid rent to the landlord to be remitted. The Congress was unwilling to support no-rent campaigns in most places, so the relationship between poor peasants and the Congress remained uncertain. On the other hand, the Indian business classes were keen on expanding their business. They now reacted against colonial policies that restricted business activities. They wanted protection against imports of foreign goods and a rupee sterling foreign exchange ratio that would discourage imports. The Dandi March and the Civil Disobedience Movement On March 12, 1930, with a group of 78 followers, Gandhiji made the famous March to Dandi to violate the Salt Law. On 6 April, Gandhiji reached Dandi and ceremonially violated the law by manufacturing salt by boiling sea water. Thousands throughout the country broke the salt law by manufacturing salt and demonstrating in front of government salt factories. As the movement spread, young people boycotted schools and colleges and rural people were incited to refuse to pay rent or tax. Another striking feature of the movement was the attempt to prevent the sale of British goods, particularly British cloth. Boycotting of foreign goods and picketing of liquor shops spread all over the country. Measures taken by British government The movement spread like wildfire throughout the country and a worried British government resorted to highly repressive measures to put it down. There were lati charges, firing and arbitrary arrests. On 4th May 1930, Mahatma Gandhi and most of the important leaders of the Congress were arrested and put in jail. The British government made an appeal to stop the agitation and invited the Congress to participate in the first round table conference to be held in December 1930 at London. The Congress decided not to participate in the conference and continued the civil disobedience movement. An alarmed British government responded with the policy of brutal repression. The Gandhi Irwin Pact Efforts for mediation with the Congress continued and Gandhiji was invited to meet Lord Irwin, the then Governor General of India. Lord Irwin unconditionally lifted the ban on the Congress and released Gandhiji and other members of the Congress Working Committee. The Gandhi Irwin Pact was signed on March 5, 1931. As per this pact, the civil disobedience movement was to be suspended. The pact was approved by the Congress in its Karachi session held under the presidentship of Sardar Patel. The Second Roundtable Conference The Second Roundtable Conference was announced to be held in London on September 7, 1931. The Congress agreed to participate in the conference. Gandhiji represented the Congress at the conference, but the negotiations broke down and he returned disappointed. After his return from London, Gandhiji was arrested. The British government revived its old repressive measures. Congress offices were sealed and the Congress Working Committee was declared an unlawful organization. 
the third round table conference in 1932 the third round table conference was held in london when it announced the controversial communal award gandhiji relaunched the civil disobedience movement but by 1934 it had lost its vigor and momentum nature of the movement mostly peasants and handicraft workers participated in this movement a wide swath of the urban population students handicraft workers factory workers including peasants took part in hartals picketing shops selling foreign goods and boycotts of local bazaars the business classes campaigned against colonial control over the indian economy and supported the civil disobedience movement to organize business interests they formed the indian industrial and commercial congress in 1920 and federation of indian chambers of commerce and industry fiki in 1927 Role of educated people and women, writers, poets, journalists, teachers and students carried on considerable educational work during the movement. Patriotic literature, anti-British pamphlets and posters were published in England and the local languages. To muzzle the press, the British decided to revive the powers of the Press Act of 1910. A remarkable feature of the civil disobedience movement was the widespread participation of women. They participated in protest marches, manufactured salt, and picketed shop selling liquors and foreign clothes. Failure of the Civil Disobedience Movement Numerous factors were responsible for the failure of the Civil Disobedience Movement. Not all social groups were moved by the concept of Swaraj. One such group was the nation's untouchables who had begun to call themselves Dalits or oppressed. The Dalits continued to be apprehensive of the Congress-led national movement. Again, the most serious limitation of the civil disobedience movement was the reduced participation of the Muslims. Many Muslims kept themselves aloof from this movement. The movement was relatively less successful in mobilizing the urban intelligentsia in relation to the non-cooperation movement. Again, there were frequent hartals in towns and cities, but the Congress preferred to remain aloof from these working-class activities. This proved to be a great miscalculation. Gandhiji halted the movement just when it had reached a matured state. In spite of all the pitfalls, it demonstrated the awakening of the political consciousness among the Indian masses.